All right, so I'm pretty excited today because it's been quite a while since I've done a full keyboard hand-wired build. I've done a few different like hand-wired macro pads over the past few months. But we're just gonna jump in and we're gonna get started because this build's kind of cool. And it's kind of pushing the limits what I can do with hand-wiring yet again. If you see my scuttle wing video, that was the last time I pushed the limits. Today, I'm really pushing the limits. So we're gonna jump in, we're gonna get started. So this here is the scuttle ring because it kind of looks like a battery ring, but originally this was gonna be called the scuttle teeny. And the reason for that is if I actually put this down and show you, these switches are very close together. These are gonna be 16 by 16 millimeter space charge switches, which we'll see how that works when I go to type on it. I don't know if it's going to actually be very comfortable because they are very close, but I do kind of have the angle to help a little bit with that. But one of the big side effects of that is first, let's just get this out of the way. This is plexiglass. There is going to be an OLED in there. So um, some people will probably like that. I find them mostly useless most of the time, and I think it would look cool on this build. So we'll see that in the final product. But if we actually look at the plate here, the way that we designed this is that because they're so close together, I actually had to put these standoffs in before. So I did this off camera before this will actually on camera, you'll probably see B-roll of it right Right now but we have these little male to female four millimeter standoffs in here because you wouldn't be able to get a screw head between the switches there but also it's possibly a negative because if i end up building this whole thing so i'm not going to know until i assemble everything these are set to four millimeter right now so the case and everything is set to four millimeter and the reason for this if i put this together and then put this plexiglass here i made it so that it sits completely flush there but the issue is if i wire everything up and then i'm not able to get this closed i'm gonna have to find a way to get these standoffs out, put six millimeter ones in here because I have confirmed those work with hand wire before the six millimeters kind of on the edge of the clearance as possible. So I'll get the six millimeter ones in here and then raise the case, reprint it and hope that all works. But I'm hoping that the four millimeter works for us fine. And then finally the case here, I actually did something I like doing a lot recently is I use fuzzy skin with 0.1 and 0.1 settings to kind of give it this really nice like look to it. We have of course our controller mount in there, which we'll talk about once we start looking at the controller later. And then the final thing on this case, that's kind of really neat for this and specific because of that height I had to set with the plexiglass here. So if we look on the edge here with our thumb keys, we kind of have like this divot here. The reason for that is I had to pull this up a little bit higher than the switches would actually sit. So when you go to type on this, your thumb's not going to hit that edge too much. It'll be a little bit more comfortable to kind of use other than the super close spacing, which I don't think is going to be crazy comfortable, but it makes a very tiny little board here. So what we're going to do now, of course, is I'm going to just grab a baggie over here of my chalk pro red switches. I'm going to go through, I'm going to pop those into the plate, and then we can actually start wiring it. <laughs> So there are the switches in the board. And if I actually hold this up, you can really see here with that standoff, just how close these are. I mean, we're right on the edges of what is possible with these is that basically there'd be no way you would be able to get a screw in there. So by doing those reverse standoffs, it kind of works. And also the height I am definitely concerned about because it's basically just as tall. So there's a standoff right there and you can see just where the pins end. So it's it's right on the limit there. We're going to see if this actually works. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down this way. I'm going to actually grab this baggie of pre-cut copper wire here. This is specifically 18 gauge. I'm using a little bit thinner gauge on this because I like to do that in my chalkboards. First of all, it's also heats up a little bit faster because there's less thermal mass, but also um, because of how thin it is, it should give us a little bit more vertical clearance. So I'm not too concerned about that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through, I'm going to solder on the columns, and then we'll be back after to kind of talk about the rest of the wiring. See you So there's all the columns complete. And if we actually look at this, you can see how they are nicely wired there. And I really do like using the 18 gauge wire. The thinner wire really does help with kind of heating up quicker. And you can see also on this, it's pretty much essential on this chalk build because of how thin it is. But I do typically like using 16 gauge because it just makes it feel a little sturdier. It's a little bit heavier and stuff, a little flimsier with this. I mean, it's not bad, but it's just kind of how it is. What we're gonna do now, dogs walking around again. But what we're going to do now is put this down. I'm going to grab over here. I have some pre-coiled diodes, which I used my diode coiling tool, which I'll link down below. But this will allow us to get some really nice secure diode connections onto the board. So I'm going to go through and do the rows now, which remember the rows are the ones that run horizontally. So basically we have one row here, one row here, here, and then here. And what we're going to actually do is I'm going to grab the pre-cut copper here. I have each half just kind of like that. And we're going to run a wire to connect the two halves. I could have done like the weird thing where I run a single wire like that, but I think doing this might make it a little bit easier to do. And then it'll also avoid the controller in the middle of the case. So I'm um, He's just, he's just wandering around sniffing stuff back there. Anyway, back to what we're doing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab my diodes over here. I'm gonna go through and do all the rows now. Wouldn't it last good? Oh, oh, oh. 
So there's the whole matrix wired up. And if we actually turn this on the side here, what you can see, so we have our standoffs here, and then we have our copper wire with the insulation there. And you can just see how kind of close that is. Now I might still have to replace these with the six millimeter standoffs, but I think for the most part, we're okay. I think it is thin enough that we'll be fine once we start wiring everything up, which speaking of wiring it up, if I actually put this down here and grab over here, the OLED, we're going to actually wire this up. And then we're going to also just wire the controller. I'm going to do it all in one time lapse, but basically this will kind of just mount onto the plate like so. So we'll put that on there and we'll bolt it down. Then we can wire those four pins onto the controller. There's two pins that will go to GPIO and then the other two pins will go to voltage and ground. And then for the controller, we're gonna just be using an RP2040 here, which one of the challenges with this board is if I actually turn it on its side, you can see that it is dual sided. So there's components on both sides of this, which kind of made it a little challenging to get the case to work properly. So if I grab the case, you can see we have this kind of more complicated recession here where the controller will sit in there and it will give it clearance by just mounting kind of on the edges there. We have our little USB-C up top there. And I, I love how the fuzzy skin looks on this, but that's how that is. I'm gonna just take everything now. I'm gonna wire it all up and make sure that everything works with the firmware. And then we have a functioning board. So I'm gonna go through and wire everything now. When it last get so there's everything all wired up and I know it looks kind of messy. This stuff here is actually some kneaded eraser rubber. I've used it a lot on builds recently to kind of hold stuff where it should. What I have to do at this point now, of course, is just assemble everything in the case. It's going to be really kind of hard to get this in there too, because I have to like put it like that and then hold it to glue it down. And then I'm going to screw this into here, which originally was going to actually use these little kind of nuts to hold it, but there's enough to like tolerance there to kind of just screw them directly. In, and I'm not really going to be able to even get behind there to get those on there. So I'm just going to go through, I'm going to assemble this in the case now, and then I can kind of show you some of the OLED stuff and some of the types. <laughs> So there's everything in the case there. And I was really worried throughout this entire video that it wouldn't fit in there because if we look at the side, you can see just how thin it is. They are four millimeter standoffs. So I was worried that those like wires and stuff inside would kind of bulge it out so it wouldn't close, but it did close just fine. But that's the board in there. And now, of course, if we look at the side, I already mentioned this a few times, we do have the fuzzy skin on there, which is something I've done, which I think looks really nice. And you can kind of see the little scoop there, which we'll see in a second, because what I wanna talk about now is I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna grab over here. I have some 16 by 16 millimeter spaced keycaps here that I printed. And then what I also did on these is I did the same 0 0.1, 0 0.1 fuzzy skin, which kind of looks really, really nice. Now you may think that it would feel weird, like the texture on there, but because the texture is actually so fine, you don't really feel it. And it actually feels better than like the normal layer lines if I didn't do a fuzzy skin. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pop these keycaps on. I'll be back after that. So here it is fully assembled with the plexiglass. I did go ahead and put that on there, which I think looks really, really nice. The texture keycaps look great. If we look at the back of it here, it's very low profile. The fuzzy skin looks really nice on there. Um, the bottom of it just overall looks really nice. And if you hold it in your hand, you can see it's just kind of really, really small. But what I really want to talk about now is kind of the thing that everyone's looking at, which is a screen in the middle, the OLED display. And I've said in the past that these are pretty useless, but I actually recently revamped my entire key map and they're kind of a little more useful. And what I mean by that is if I actually put it down and then I pull up a USB cable here and I just go ahead and plug it in, what you're going to see is that initially what we see is just Scott O'Rang. Eventually I'm going to change this to be like the base layer or default layer. But if I hold over here, these are my function keys or my layer keys. If I hold this, we'll get to my code layer. If we hold this one, we'll get to my number layer. And then if I hold this one, I'll get to my function layer over here. But the big thing with my new key map is I have different layers for like gaming and windows and stuff. So imagine if this said Scott O'Rang and then underneath it said like windows or Mac or game mode or something. That's when the OLED could actually be kind of useful. I do want to do some stuff with animations, but for now it's kind of just sitting on that right now, which is decent enough. It works. It's kind of cool. But with that, what I want to do now is I actually want to do a typing test on it, of course, because I'm actually surprised that even though it's very close together, it's actually kind of comfortable and easy to adapt from normal like chalk spacing or regular MX spacing. So we're just going to go ahead and do a typing test on it. So you did see I made a few typos there, and that is because, yet again, this is a 16 by 16 space keyboard, but it does feel pretty nice to type on it. It actually sounds pretty good. It feels good. But if we look here, 
you can see just kind of how close everything is together. So when you kind of move here, you have a tendency to hit miss inputs while you're kind of on that learning curve of beginning with it. But I am going to be daily driving this for a little while. I really like how it looks. I really like the fuzzy skin and then the kind of scoop here with the keycaps kind of really helps with that comfort level on your thumb not hitting into it. That is an issue I've had in the past with other chalkboards is that because they're so low profile, you'll kind of hit the thumb on the case and it's not the most comfortable, but this one actually works out nice. Of course we do have, if we plug it in here, that little OLED display, which I think just looks really, really cool. Originally I was gonna just put the controller in the middle, but I was like, you know what, it might be cool. And that's what I did on here, it looks really nice. But with that, it's very low profile. I really like this board. I don't think I mentioned in this video that all the files for this, along with all my other hand wire boards are available for free on my repo. So link in the description for that. And as per usual, comment, rate, and subscribe. Um, join my Discord if you're not in there, if you have questions on stuff like this. But until next time, I'll see you, and uh, thanks for watching.